Thank you for joining me again. Today's story is called Deep Breath, and I know it took a little while for me to update to get another story out, but that was because I've been trying to figure out which story would be best to release, and after I got finished with this, I kind of knew in my heart all along I was going to release this one next, but my brain tried to fight with me on it. Um, so I decided that I would release this next. It's a story about a cop who's having a lot of trouble in his personal life, and suddenly someone new comes into his life, and her presence seems to make everything better. And at the end, he is forced to make a choice between one way of life and another. I hope that you enjoy it. If you do, leave me some com uh, comments and feedback. If it's constructive, then I don't mind, but you know, don't just waste up space by saying that it sucks. At least give me a reason why. It is a first person view and I'm going to try and stay in tense. But sometimes it slips and I've done light revision on this. But otherwise, please just let me know what you think. I'm going to try and keep this short. It's probably going to be cut into about four pieces because this is a few pages longer than Rosaria. Um, the link to this in text will be in the description either now or sometime in the very near future if I forget about it. Uh, other than that, please enjoy. My mom told me once when I was little that there's a reason you don't see dead butterflies scattered around everywhere. I was ten and had just captured one in a jar, and I can remember her words as clearly as if I were hearing them for the first time. Butterflies are special creatures. When they're here, they gather up the wishes of us humans and keep them safe. Since they're mute, they can't tell anyone. And when it's time for them to die, they flutter up to heaven to tell their secrets to God. Cute story. She said it was something her mother told her, but I'm pretty sure her mom got that from a movie. Or maybe it was a book. I could swear I'd heard it before. Hearing it from her, though, I couldn't help but believe it. My mom's smart. Not just smart, but a genius. And this isn't the barkings of a guy obsessed with his mom. I've seen her degrees. Graduated top of her class at Yale. Even worked at the space program for a while. So hearing a ridiculous story like that from her left some impact. Still, that didn't stop me from losing faith in the story when I saw the little butterfly corpses raining from the sky over a farm that was being crop dusted on the way through Kansas last year. Still, the story has that charm that keeps me running back to it every time something goes wrong in my life. Problem is catching the little buggers. They don't gather the wishes that they hear passing by us. No, these have to be secret wishes. The only wishes they take are the ones whisper to them, so you have to capture them and whisper it oh so softly, then let them go unharmed. Have you ever tried to catch a butterfly? Without a net, it's nearly hopeless. Still, staring down at these divorce papers makes me want to go out and try to yank a few out of the air. I can't believe she's going through with it, man, Anderson says. Yeah, it's a surprise to me, too. I thought we were doing good, but hey, what do I know? I push some papers across the desk, fiddling with my badge. It spins around slowly on the desk, providing a good distraction for a while. You don't sound so broken up over it, Rex. You okay? I guess. I don't know. I sigh and rest back in the chair, trying to sort out the trash in my head. I guess I'm just in shock. I mean, we have kids and all, and she's just been such a sweet person, but now I'm starting to think she might actually fight to keep them for herself. Feels like all this comes down on me, you know, if I weren't out working so much. I shake my head, tossing the trash about. Maybe reordering it will help me figure things out. But as it all falls into place, it's just as chaotic and useless as it was before. She knew you were a cop, man. If she didn't want to be a cop's wife, she should have thought about that before she got involved. He sounds disgusted, and I can understand why. He's lost lots of girls over his job. This is just such a mess. I pick through my thoughts, tossing out whatever I can to try and order the mess that's only continued to build over the years. One little scrap catches my attention, however, and it takes me a few moments to scrutinize it long enough to realize that this one's what, this one is one worth saving. Too many thoughts. Too much trash. I'll never get it all sorted out and clear my head. I just remembered something. That case we got into a few days ago. You know, the drowning? Yeah. He sighs and leans back. Yeah, I really liked her. I thought we might actually have something. Sorry I didn't say anything earlier. I just... Hey, don't worry about it, man. 
Anderson laughs it off, but I can tell he's grateful I finally said something. Seems like he's wanted to talk about it for a while now. His dark brown eyes scan around the room, not quite able to look directly at me. It's a guy thing, though. Guys can't look at each other when they talk about personal problems. You've had your own shit, you know? Yeah, I can't deny that. Hey, Rex, we got another one. The scanner blares and I wince. Goddamn Max is hard of hearing and turns the thing up to ear-splitting volume. Two, actually. Twins. Male and female, mid-twenties. Two at once? Fuck, they're number 29 and 30 so far. How long is this shit gonna go on? All right, give us a minute and we'll be out there. Give Andy the directions. I stand and shake my head, walking to the coffee maker. The trash tumbles around again, and by some miracle, I manage to shake loose the thought I'd lost days ago. Annie's birthday's coming up. Like the others, the two bodies are floating on the surface of the water. Both face up with... Are they smiling? No, just a trick of the light. Who the hell smiles while they're drowning to death? And then again, I could swear I remember having this same thought with a few others. Ah, this isn't the time for that. I walk around the area and look for clues, but it's the same as the others. Only their tracks went toward the water. Nothing around that even hinted at foul play. I take a few pictures and walk back to Anderson to help him bag the bodies. It's just fucked up, I mutter. They're so young. Seems like suicide's more of a problem around here than we thought. Though why they're all drowning themselves is a mystery. Who the hell can do something like that? I accidentally breathed in some soda the other day and pitched a fit. I look back at the water, and for one fleeting second I could swear I see a person swimming down there. A little flash of something vaguely human, then a few more that were definitely human, and then they're gone, and I'm already convinced myself that it's I'm just seeing things, just fish reflecting the light. Feels like I'm missing something. Something I should see or know, but it just won't come. People running into the water and drowning themselves just ain't normal. It isn't natural. So there had to be something behind it. Yet as I look around, there isn't a scrap of evidence to suggest otherwise. You all right, man? I can't get past that habit. It always makes me, th makes him th sound like a stoner, adding man behind everything he says. But it's his quirk, so I don't bring it up. You've been staring at the water more than ten minutes now. Has it been that long? Sorry, just trying to make sense of all this. Feels like I've seen it before. Yeah, 28 times before. Not like that. I mean this whole thing. All these mass suicides barely spread over a month. Well, we don't know for sure it's suicide, man. That's just our running theory. But it's all we have, right? I gesture around the area. Show me one bit of evidence that suggests otherwise. Wish I could, man. He looks around, and I can almost see all the air being sucked out of his body. Wish I could. I get why it's so important for Andy to believe these aren't suicides. One of the only girls I had ever heard him talk about without adding, she's such a fucking bitch, man, at the end was amongst the ones who had died. They hadn't really gotten serious, but he had planned to speak to her on the same day she was found dead. Come to think about it, she was one of the ones that I could swear I saw smiling as we towed her soggy corpse from a lake. If she really did drown herself, that means that she didn't feel the same way about him. And from what I remember him saying about her, she seemed crazy about seeing him. I'd seen them together once, and I could tell that if he brought up the concept of making them an official couple, she'd have jumped at it. What could have happened in just one day to make her kill herself? I stare up at my ceiling and heave a sigh. Nothing makes sense. A year ago, my life was perfect. I had a beautiful and loving wife, two beautiful kids, an eight-year-old girl, Annie, and a three-year-old boy, Ronnie. And now I have a mountain of debt, a wife who's soon to be an ex, and a terminally ill mother. I might lose my kids. I might even lose my house. I sigh again and roll over. I can't sleep. It's three in the morning, and I've been up all this time sorting through the mental trash that plagues me. If I lost my house, I could at least have more money to pay off Mom's medical bills. Her debt's my debt now that I've taken it on myself to take care of her. Someone has to, and Dad ain't around to do it anymore. I finally get tired of the familiar dot pattern above my head and get to my feet. If I'm not going to sleep, I may as well do a little more work. Within only a few moments, I'm in my car, or moving shit heap, depending on your point of view, and on my way to the site of the most recent drowning. There had to be some clues there. One piece of junk cluttering my head is the question of why so many of the victims were smiling. 
Could it really be a trick of the light, or was it true that they were happy at the moment of their death? How could they be? It just doesn't add up, and I get the feeling it never will. I pull over and cross the police tape, looking around in the dark with the flashlight I always kept in my car. Maybe in the dark things might make a little more sense. That's the thought, but after only a few moments of looking around, I find it makes even less sense somehow. It's not like all these people accidentally wandered into the water, at least not into this one. It was barely a pond, but visible even in the glow of the street light some distance away. The drownings would make a lot more sense if they had just happened in one particular body of water, but no, they're spread out over multiple ponds and lakes all over the place. Most of them are way out of our jurisdiction, but news of them drifted. A soft splashing sound catches my attention and I turn the large flashlight out over the water. Someone's there, treading water so far out I'm convinced she must be drowning. I can only tell it's a woman because, well, she's topless. Hey, I drop the flashlight so it shines out in her direction and kick off my shoes, diving into the water. She doesn't respond, but I can see her turn toward me, and it a strange expression on her face. Something I could only think of as a mixture of amusement and wariness. Once I reach out, she starts to swim away a little farther and I realize she's not drowning at all. She's skinny dipping. Ma'am, this is a crime scene. You shouldn't be out here. She giggles and I swear it's more like the sound of water rushing down downstream and she shakes her head. I live around here, so I figured no one would see me. I had no idea you'd come back. Come back. I shake my head. What? You came here with that other man to take away those two bodies. I saw you. I try to keep my eyes on hers, but something about them seems strange. Hard to stare at. They're bright blue, and the light shining off them almost makes them waver like the water we're both treading. She has dyed green hair, but it's the most amazing dye job I've ever seen. It almost looks natural, and I'd be tricked if I didn't know that hair didn't grow in green. So why did you come back? Her voice almost startles me. I'm so focused on trying to figure out her strange appearance that I didn't notice how close she drifted to me until she spoke. She's almost hanging off me now, one arm around my shoulders and exposing just the top half of her breasts. I... I I stammer, trying to get a hold of my tongue. She's one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen. Although I'm sure she must be somewhere around 20 or so, a little less than half my age. She's got an amazing body, which is very quickly intruding on my personal space. And God help me, I can't tr bring myself to try and push her back. I'm investigating two suicides that happened out here. I finally manage to talk, but it sounds so weak, I'm sure she barely hears the words. That's not fun, she replies. Why don't you come have some fun with me? You look like you need it. The implications of that run through my head, and for once all the junk seems to clear out. I don't know what she actually means, but I know what I wish it meant. My wife is leaving me, so it's not like it'd be wrong. I'm a free man. Still, I just did meet this girl. Oh, the dilemma. With all the self-restraint I can muster, I pull away and point. Come on, up to the shore. I have a blanket for you. I don't need blankets, she replied, though I can see her moving right along with me. As we reach the shore, the flashlight blinks out and I utter a curse. I'll get it. Just stay there. I pull ahead of her and onto the bank, picking up the light. With a few good whacks, it finally blinks back on, but as I shine it over the water, I can see no trace of a girl. As quickly as I had met her, she was gone.